Michael Moe is the CEO and co-founder of the Cooler Technology Group. He joins us live out of San Francisco. Michael, good to see you. Appreciate your time, and thank you for uh, talking to us. I uh, hope, hope you're keeping safe where you are. So just walk us through what exactly Cooler makes. I mean, uh, from the little that I've read, it sounds as though it's carbon fiber stuff, and it's literally like, I don't know if you're a car guy or not, but, uh, you know, they've got these things called turbo blankets, which, I mean, turbos obviously get very, very hot, right? Made of carbon fiber as well, very flexible, etc. and they, they wrap these things around turbos to keep them uh, uh, cool or cooler. Is it something like what you do, but for batteries instead? Well, yeah, well, well th thank you for having us. Uh, good morning. Um, yeah, we come from about a 30-year heritage in uh, making carbon fiber-based energy and thermal management solutions for space applications. So as you mentioned, uh, our parts are trusted by NASA, used on the Mars Rover 2020 program. It's on the International Space Station, and also numerous different aerospace and defense applications. Uh, and our customers include the likes of NASA, Lockheed Martin, U.S. Air Force, Department of Transportation, Department of Energy, and also Michael Andretti. So you, you, you mentioned... Uh, Cars, so Michael Andretti, Andretti Autosports, uh, we're the official thermal management and battery safety partner for them. Uh, and our mission is to take these space proven technologies and apply to the world of uh, lithium ion batteries and electronics to keep them uh, cooler, lighter, and safer. All right, and I'm sure that a lot of your, if not most of your technology, is proprietary, right? Let, let me ask you about uh, barriers uh, to entry, uh, you know, because a lot of your stuff could theoretically be used. Uh, for lithium-ion batteries in EVs. China is the world's largest market for EVs. Tesla's uh, already there. Uh, I'm wondering, what, what are the risks? I mean, I'm sure your stuff is copyrighted and patented, right? But what is the risk of uh, somebody getting a hold of some of your products and reverse engineering it and doing it and selling it for cheaper? Yeah, well, we make um, the, uh, the, par uh, you know, the parts here uh, in, in California. Uh, we have uh, numerous different patents around the technology, and <clears throat> and we also um, have a you know long relationship with our customers, regulators. Uh, for you know, for for example, on the battery storage solution side, uh, we're literally deploying the technology that's on the International Space Station for battery transportation. That we're working with U U.S. Department of Transportation to provide that technology for recycled batteries. So that you can ship recycled batteries, prototype batteries, and use batteries, but much much safer. We believe that it's a critical function of the the, the whole battery recycling ecosystem that's going to go to about 18 billion dollars by 2030. Um, and that's a technology patents as well as permits, regulations, certifications with regulatory bodies to allow us to have um, you know to make the product and technology sticky with our customers. Michael, if your tech has been proven by a NASA in space and on the ISS, are you talking to either Virgin Galactic, Amazon, or Tesla about partnering their commercial space programs? Yeah, um, we haven't publicly come uh, come out with these customers' names yet, but uh, a lot of customers that are both government and private enterprise taking the battery into space, or uh, we're working with them to evaluate our solution to to keep their batteries safe. Um, and I think the previous question about how to apply these things to EVs, um, we have uh, customers in electric vehicles, electric planes, then electric bl uh, bikes, you know, so, so it's about electric transportation of all kinds, use our technology to test for safety. Can you say, Michael, if Tesla is one of them, it seems a perfect fit? Uh, it would seem a perfect fit, but we haven't, uh, come publicly with that name yet, so I would uh, uh, refrain from doing that. Otherwise, my lawyers would uh, jump on me right away. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Michael, listen, I want to get back to the, an earlier question I was asking you, and that is, look, uh, what are you doing to make sure that nobody uh, rips off and reverse engineers your products and, uh, and markets and sells it for, uh, for cheaper? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I think that for every technology company that wants to mass produce and have mass adoption of their technology face similar uh, challenges. Uh, I think that there's you know a number of steps that you can take. One is to um, 
you know, make that technology better than anybody else's. Have the IP around that. And I think most importantly is to have the business model around your technology to serve the market. So, um, so, for, so for, for example, this technology will serve aerospace markets, defense markets, and EV markets. And different customers um, have different cost sensitivity to that. So for the EV and energy storage customers that have high sensitivity around pricing and in very large volumes, and we're working on uh, partnerships and licensing partnerships where to make the cost of this material cheaper and then more available to the customer. Um, we want to get to a model where it's almost like iTunes uh, from, from, uh, from Apple, that it becomes uh, more expensive for you to steal songs than just to pay you know, $9.99 a month and get 60 million songs at your fingertips. So that's the business model that we're pursuing. Interesting. Interesting model. Michael, uh, the challenge, and I know you're working on this, is to reduce the manufacturing cost and to scale up FTIM, fiber thermal interface materials technology, into mass production. Can you give us a sense of where you are on that journey, how you're going to achieve that, and, and what sort of price point uh, you are looking at? Yeah, uh, we've been uh, doing a lot of work in cost down, you know, uh, starting from the space applications coming down to the EV. Uh, I think uh, it all starts with, you know, the right people, the right experience to do that. Uh, this year we hired, uh, uh, you know, we recently hired a president CEO that uh, came from Jabil. He used to make iPhones uh, in Asia. So uh, definitely know how to you know, scale up manufacturing. Uh, we've been uh, hiring our VP of operations, VP of sales, all from very large scalable operational backgrounds. So now we're uh, putting the people in place to, and then to put the manufacturing facilities and put the machinery in place to facilitate those models. So I think that 2021, if you will, second half this year will be a transition year for us. Uh, you will see uh, scaling up in, in production, going to uh, high-end applications, and then at 22 and 2023, going forward, you'll see much higher growth going to some of these mass market applications that you're talking about. You know, and then you know, even this year, we're only at single, low single digit point with the EV penetration, and uh, the market will grow about tenfold over the next five to ten years. So there's a lot of growth ahead of us. Watch this space, Michael. Great conversation. Thank you very much indeed for joining us, sir. Michael Mo there of uh, Cooler Technology Group.